everyone, it's Mike, and now that we have our Northwind database created on our SQL Server running, we're going to start importing some of the data. So the first thing we're going to do is create a table. Now you can create a table using the GUI or with SQL. I'm going to start with the GUI just because I'm kind of new to Postgres and it kind of can help show us a little bit about what we can do. I haven't memorized all the rules yet. So you can right click and create a table and the first table we'll bring over is our customers table. One difference we'll make, it is best practice in non-Windows versions of SQL to use the underscore. And so rather than doing camel case customer ID, we'll actually do all lowercase with underscores. Same with the table name. So we're, our table name is going to be customers. We're going to go save. No, nope, not yet. We're going to go to the columns. Now, again, I'm starting to learn what we need to do or what data types are available in Postgres. So I'm just using that for that reason. So customer ID, we want something that's sequential. So we're going to have our customer underscore ID. And I found that in Postgres, they use a serial as a data type. And we're not going to let this be null. And we're going to make it our primary key. Now, as you start adding these columns, it actually starts generating the SQL that you would write here. And I do not know what the OIDS equals false is, and this is just giving me access. Uh, I found that both of those are really not entirely necessary. But let's go get a few more of our columns in here, and then we'll kind of write this from scratch. So we would also need our customer name, and our customer name is a text field. And I also found in Postgres, let's go look at our data types right here that the best data type to use you don't need to worry about bar chars unless you absolutely want to limit the space there is no performance difference between text fields or var chars in the postgres database which is not true of other databases again serial is used for our auto increment we have our various types of integers we have bits date time and timestamp for the full date time and you can use double but or decimal rather double is a bigger one but you can use numeric or decimal they are using numeric in their little GUI here so I assume that's the preferred way to do it in Postgres so we have our customer name our next field is our contact name contact name text again We'll go ahead and allow nulls to be values here. And then our address, also text, our city, text, our postal code, which again, we're going to change that to underscores text again on postal code, and country. Text again. Okay. So what's going to happen here is this generates all this lovely SQL for us. And we're just going to go decipher it now. I'm going to copy it. We'll cancel out of here. And if you go up to Tools and go to the Query tool, you can paste this in, and this is just the same as the query browser we were using before. We can expand this out so we can see our full query. Again, I don't know what OIDS is, so we're not going to worry about it. I don't think we need the semicolon either, but it looks like it is best practice in Postgres to put it there because it's wanting us to put it there, but I've ran it both ways. It works just fine, and we're not going to worry about altering the owner. So let's break this down. So with our tables, we have a few operators, creating the table, altering the table, dropping the table. So pretty simple, create table. It's put in public in front of it because it's doing the public schema. You don't need that either. By default, it's going to go to the one related to your query. So create table customers, customer ID. We're going to use a serial. 
it's not null, customer name, text, contact name, text, address, text, city, text, postal code, text, country, text, primary key. So you can see this is even a little simpler than the GUI. I only used it to kind of get a feel for the syntax and what you can do. And then the final thing, it's saying, hey, this is going to be our primary key. And that's important for indexing purposes. So then we're going to go ahead and run this query. And we do that with our execute refresh button right here. It looks like I can press F5 for my quick hotkey. So let's press F5 and it returns successfully. And if we right click here and refresh, we can see that we have a customers table. And if we right click it and go to view edit data, all the rows, it's gonna pull this up and it even generates the SQL that we would write. Select all from customers order by customer ID in ascending order, and there you have it. In this public doesn't really matter, and we can copy that out and write our own, but you can see we get all the column names, and if we try and run this again, it's gonna throw an error because customer already exists. You can't create the table anymore, but you can alter the table, and if I try and alter this table, it's probably going to throw a syntax error just because that is not the syntax for alter. So for alter syntax, if we go to W3Schools and we look at our SQL tutorial, we can probably go find alter table syntax. Oh, yep, there's no parentheses. You just add the column name with the data type or you can alter table and drop a column so we can go in alter our table get rid of these parentheses and we could say let's just leave our id alone because it's our primary key but we could say we can try add customer name text and add contact name text this is probably also going to error for us because they already have those columns but we could drop them and run it. And when we're dropping them, we don't need the type. So it goes, it altered our table. Now if we select all from customers, the order's changed and I found out that Unfortunately, in Postgres, there is no way to change the order other than dropping all the columns and then putting them back in or recreating the table. You could create a view, but the order really doesn't matter because if you really wanted to change the order, you could always write it out this way, um, which in the end is probably what they'll end up doing more often than not. Customer name, contact name, address, cities, Postal code, country, run that. and now it's back in the proper order. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and create the rest of the tables really quick here. So again, create table. We need a table name. Our table name is going to be categories. Categories. We're going to use our parentheses. And we're going to go ahead and bring in our columns with a data type. So category only has three. Looks like we have our serial text and text. So we're going to do category underscore ID is an int serial and is not null. Okay, then our next one is going to be category name, text, and finally, description, also text. Then we need to say our primary key is category underscore ID, and I probably messed up the syntax there. We'll try that. Comma there. Create the table. So let's do the next one. Create table employees. And then we're going to do our employee ID. 
serial not null, and that's also going to end up being our primary key, so we'll just copy it down. Last name, first name. Now we got to get a birth date. Looks like they're using the two word birth date and this is going to be a date. It doesn't have a time component, so we don't need to worry about using the timestamp. We have a photo, which is another text, and notes, which is another text, and that's it. Run. Okay, created that one. And the homework would, for the rest of this would be to go through and create the rest of these tables and when you're doing order details make sure you do un order underscore details and that is how you create tables and we, we went through an alter example and we went through adding and removing it finally if I wanted to drop this table that's how you delete a table drop table employees run that the table's gone and that will erase any data if there were any but our table didn't have any so we can create it back again really quick here and refresh here and we got our employee table so pretty straightforward after writing them by hand I don't even know why you'd use the GUI other than to see kind of syntax again and what kind of data types are available to you. So Google's also great for that too.